Welcome. Tell me where you're tuning in from, Instagram. Those of you on Facebook, welcome. Give this video a thumbs up or a heart and just tell me where you're tuning in from in the comment section. I think I've got a little issue on Instagram. Hopefully that'll clear it right there. And let me know that you can hear me. There we go, now you can hear me. Perfect. As you log on here on both of these channels, please go ahead and toss me some love and just tell me where you are tuning in from. I have got some sage and Palo Santo burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and send that your way just to kind of cleanse the energy. And I thought we would choose a really relative uh, topic today. Uh, I thought we would talk about finances financial abundance. And so as you come on here, welcome Ahmad, welcome Andrew, welcome Derek, welcome Sarah, welcome Nadine, welcome Naiz, welcome John, welcome Mike, welcome Carol. And then on Instagram, there's so many of you, please introduce yourself in the comments, city, state, country you're tuning in from. And, you know, I've talked a lot about finances and I do a lot of Akashic record readings for people and a lot of a lot of things come up for people surrounding finances especially now. I remember when I relocated here in August, uh someone who I consider a friend who literally travels around on a private jet, he said you better squeeze every penny out of every single client you have because you know the, the financial situation in the world is just is just terrible and it's only going to get worse and he wasn't the only one actually several people said that and i i kept thinking to myself wow these people are super fear based like i don't think that way i don't when i think of abundance and money I think of what we put out into the world comes back to us. So when we're struggling with money, when we're struggling with finances, it's always about where are we being too selfish in our own lives. And we all go through it. I've gone through it as well. And of course, astrologically, we all go through certain situations in life, for example, in Vedic astrology, there's something called Sade Sate, and it usually happens, some people never go through it, but many people go through it one to three times in their lifetime. And what that is, a Sade Sate, is uh, two years, two two-year periods, and one seven-year period of financial hardship. And, you know, I study Chinese astrology as well, and we're going into a really horrible year for the dragon, and then the following year is the best year for the dragon. So I believe we're in the year of the rabbit. It's like lucky for rabbits, but you know, we can, we can put a lot of energy into astrology, or we can actually get to the root cause of our financial issues. And for me, being a healer, and being uh, someone who works with a lot of people one-on-one, -on -one, no, stop. A lot of times finances are inherited. It's our ancestral karma that we have yet to clear. So a lot of times when I am working with a client and they're talking about finances and they're talking about how bad their finances are, a lot of times what I find is that their parents also had financial issues or one parent had financial issues. And so 
I always like to dig a little deeper and say, okay, well, how are your mom's finances? How are your dad's finances? And usually what I find is if it's a male, especially if they're the only child or they're the youngest, or there's been some type of abandonment along the way, their father also had financial issues. And if it's a female, especially if they're the youngest, or there's been some type of abandonment along the way, they'll have financial issues. It's like the youngest child seems, or the only child, seems to carry a lot of the financial, financial lineage karma. Welcome, Michael. Thank you for telling me where you're tuning in from. I believe you're tuning in from Canada. Welcome, Jose, Jose and Carol and Nicholas and Russell. Tell me where you're tuning in from. Thank you for the hearts. So a lot of times what I like to do, and I am going to draw a few cards just to see where the energy is with all of you, is I like to go to the root cause. And the root cause for me is always go back and heal the parents' financial lineage karma, whatever uh, financial karma is lingering, right? You know, we can, we can hear these things growing up. I didn't hear these things, but a lot of people that I've worked with heard money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, you know, how are you going to buy that? Your looks, you know, people hear different things growing up. And really, in a sense, that plants a seed in our head to think, okay, that's the way it is in life, right? Money doesn't buy, money doesn't grow on trees. Oh my gosh, you know, I... I got to get on this, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I always go to the root cause. So today I'm going to do a little healing exercise with all of you that I like to do with a lot of my clients. And we're going to start with what I call a double deck. And this is just two decks combined in one. We've got the animal spirit cards and we've also got the moon cards because we just had a new moon. So I'm going to start, I'm just going to pull one card. Okay. So I love this. You are never alone. Right? So normally when I pull this card, I would want to remind all of you that you are never alone. But I feel like whoever I'm channeling today, it's someone who seems to get themselves in situations where they overspend and then they rely on others to get them out of things. So there's two types of, of things that happen in our lives. There's situations that come up that are just unfair, and then there's situations where we can't budget money, we overspend on things that aren't important, etc. I don't know about all of you, but I barter even to get my nails done. I believe in the bartering system. I don't throw away money. Every single dress I wear is at least 10 to 15 years old. I don't blow money on things that, uh, even with my home, all my furniture I had at my very first house in Ohio, which was 15 years ago. So although my moves are expensive, all my things are very old. I don't believe in frivolously just throwing away money. Welcome, Jennifer. Tell me where you're tuning in from. Welcome, Steve. So, you know, you are never alone is kind of two-sided to me. It's kind of like, yes, you're never alone. There's always someone you can reach out to. But how about planning better, being a little more frugal, and relying on yourself for a change? That's what that means. Also, be here now. So that tells me that many of us aren't actually living in the moment, hummingbird spirit. Some of you may have seen a hummingbird recently. It may be a sign. So be here now means live in the moment. If you're constantly, say you're going through something that is very stressful in your life, say it is financial, and you're so focused on that one thing, you know, getting the bag, making that coin, your business or whatever, that you don't focus your energy on other things such as going to the gym, proper socializing, interacting with other people, then you're not living in the moment. And what is the money all about to begin with, right? 
It's not buying you joy or happiness. It's keeping you feeling like you're stuck. Excuse the fire alarm. I need to fix that. So I also like this, embrace the in-between, flamingo spirit. And I especially like this when we're talking about finances. And here's why. So when I get embrace the in-between, if we were doing a normal, like an Akashic record reading, I would say, oh, it just means embrace when you're in between relationships, whatever. This means proper planning when it comes to finances. Embrace the in-between. Many of you can be entrepreneurs like myself. What are you doing in that in-between time when little to nothing is coming in? Do you have money put away? Have you saved? Have you created a cushion? Because when we don't have a, a cushion in place, right, and we're an entrepreneur, that's a very scary place to be. So, you know, it's about preparing, right? I saw a Jim Carrey quote the other day, and it was so good. It was about, he was saying, if you can't take a year to two years, to live within your means, then you care too much about what other people think. So maybe some of you scaled down or you're about to scale down. You're about to go from a huge house to a one room apartment or something and you're embarrassed or you're, there's no reason to be. You know, oh, she'll kill me so I can't use her as an example. Okay, someone I really look up to in my family actually lived very frugally for a number of years. And she just had her house remodeled and she's getting a pool installed and you know, it was it's like so beautiful to see like the glow up, right? And so there's nothing wrong with that. I actually have a client that is a closet financial advisor right now. She's actually in the beauty industry, but to me she's a financial advisor and she swears by living within your means. So it's about taking steps, you know, maybe when you're not living within your means to uh, Airbnb out your home or to find a roommate or to scale down. Like I said in the beginning of this, you will never find me buying shoes ever. And as much of a handbag connoisseur as I am, all my handbags are 10 to 20 years old. Everything in this house is 10 to 15 years old. This dress is, I wore this dress right after high school, so that means it's very old. And to some of you, you may think, oh, well, it looks old. To me, I love it. It fits me good, it feels good. So it's about really having gratitude for the things you already have, about embracing the in-between right and planning for those times where maybe not a, a lot is coming in it's about living in the moment and it's about you aren't alone you can seek counseling financial counseling or what have you you can seek a friend's advice but maybe what that card is saying is you should plan like you are alone right so I wanna take one more card and it's take the lead. So I love this because this tells me that many of you have things that you're excellent at, but you're not stepping into your power to create that abundance for you. So if this is you and it's stag spirit, and I absolutely love this stag, and I want I want to tell you something I learned about the stag when I, when I moved in here. There's, there was a beautiful buck. I think you guys remember that. I, I shared it on Facebook. There was a beautiful buck in the front yard. It was like the week I moved in. And it was just eating leaves for like an hour. I was so grateful. I was like, oh my gosh, this buck, it's eating leaves. It's in my front yard. And I think I like almost cried when I recorded the video. So I started researching the spiritual meaning of the buck or the stag. And the beautiful thing is they actually shed their antlers. So they, yeah, so they shed their antlers. They shed their crown, right? And to me, just to me, that means that they actually humble themselves. They take their crown off. They leave it somewhere to become a better person, right? So there's no shame in my game. You guys know I have had ups and downs in life, but 
I always end up up. And the reason I always end up up is because I try to do things in a karmically balanced way, right? I don't, I don't screw people over. I don't leave people high and dry. I try to do things like balanced. And oftentimes when we have a spiritual calling or we're alone, we can be the target, right? But I never try to play the victim. So that's all about taking the lead and and, and leaving your crown when you need to and stepping aside and doing the hard work needed to elevate. So I really love this. So I'm going to take one more card. Looks like it's an animal spirit reading right now. Okay. Magic works through you. Beetle spirit. So this screams spiritual awakening for many of you. Whenever the beetle shows up, I remember when I was going through my second awakening in 2017, there were these beautiful rainbow colored beetles stuck to my screen of my bedroom and I was super depressed. I was laying in bed a lot. I remember seeing these and magic does work through you. Every one of us, you, 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 was born with an innate gift. I don't care if you work in the corporate world. I don't care if you're an attorney. I don't care if you drive cars for a living, fly planes for a living, I don't care. Every one of us was born with a unique gift. And when we get the magic works through you cards, some of you may be going through an awakening, that's what the beetle stands for, to where your gifts are about to be poured out of you. So this is a really powerful, beautiful card that I absolutely love. Thank you for telling me where you're tuning in from. Let me know if this resonates with you in the comments on Facebook. Last but not least, turkey spirit. Turkeys are such beautiful, gentle animals. Nothing is wasted. So some of you may have invested in someone, something, and you think, okay, all of this is going to waste. I wish I never would have invested in this. How could I? I just went through that where I invested in a property in... Las Vegas, and it was literally a waste. It was a complete waste of my time, waste of my energy, drain of my energy, and it cost a lot to you know relocate and things like that. And I remember driving here from there and thinking, this is not a waste. I learned so many valuable lessons about you know to trust my intuition and to always check things out like prior, right? You don't want to get involved in business in any type of situation with, you know, schmucks or takers or anything like that. I learned so much from that situation. And that's what I want to relay to all of you today. When it comes to finances, something you invested in, what have you, nothing is ever wasted. Thank you. Jose, I appreciate that. Welcome, Mike. Tell me where you're tuning in from. And welcome all of you on Instagram as well. Tell me where you're tuning in from. Welcome being who you want. We are designing an Oracle deck together, so I'm really excited that she's on here. So I, wanna, I want to talk about one other thing, and we're going to draw one last card. When it comes to money... And I have a lot of wisdom when it comes to this card number 22. Some of you could be a life path number 22 watching wisdom. What you put out into the world comes back to you. If you are hoarding your money, if you are holding on to your money too tightly, it stops the flow of energy. So we can actually be too tight with our money as well. I had to pay a f two fines. <laughs> over the past few months, totaling up to $900. They were $4.25 a piece. And I was like, ugh, it was so frustrating to me. I kept putting it off and putting it off because I thought, God, I don't want to, why do I have to, I didn't know, you know, why do I have to pay this? And I had had like what, a, what I thought was a wild animal removed, turned out to just be frog. Anyway, nothing is wasted. I learned a valuable lesson. I now have the wisdom I need not to do that again. So it's just lessons that we learn along our way. I wanna show you a few other things 
few little tricks and tips. So a few things I love to, actually, I probably have one on my wrist, I do. So this is a How Light. How Light brings peace in. I have one when you walk in the door, it's kind of hidden and it brings peace to everyone who walks in the door. And how light is not seen as a stone for abundance, usually adventuring is. But for me, how light is a very abundant stone. I wear it uh, daily, I wear it on my left wrist, which is for receiving. And sometimes I put it on my right wrist, uh, which is for giving. I had cleaning ladies, carpet cleaners in here over the past week, and so I wore it on my right wrist because I knew I was gonna be shelling out cash. So I, I wear it on the day I pay my bills as well, on my right wrist, not on my left, and then I immediately cleanse it, put it back on my left wrist. To me, how light is a powerful stone for receiving and for peace, and for me, it represents abundance, not for many other people, but for me, and I think it's because I've never seen a halite stone that is similar to anything else. So it means abundance can come in different ways. So usually with like an adventuring, to me, they all pretty much look the same. Rose quartz, it's all pink, it looks the same. The halite is so intricate with its many facets, its different colors. It almost looks like marble and or quartz or something. And so I keep this next to my bed. I wear it for receiving. Another thing I like to do is use sound, the law of vibration, one of the hermetic principles to draw in abundance to me. I love using my new drum and I love using my singing bowls. And so if I can pick it up here, sorry. So I'm gonna leave you with this. I'm actually gonna leave you. So the drumming releases the lower chakras. And hopefully this will get your butt moving. I just feel like <laughs> so cleared. So I invite all of you over the next week to think of the animal spirit guides that came through this reading and to think of ways that you can increase your abundance, to think about the drum drowning out, you know, the noise of other people's opinions 
and to go after whatever is in your heart to go after. Because I think that's important. I love you guys. So uh, listen, I've been really busy this month. So repeat clients know how to pay me. It's the detox intuitive on uh, Venmo. I'm asking everybody go through Venmo or Zelle at this time, not through my website as we change the payment system around. For holistic wellness or intuitive life coaching, please fill out the questionnaire at andreacox.com. On Instagram, the link is in my bio, or you can just go to andreacox.com, click on holistic wellness coaching or intuitive life coaching. There's a different set of questions for both. And for the Akashic Record readings, just click on Intuitive Guidance. And uh, I'm working with quite a few people coming up. Uh, uh, Erica Carico and I are going to be working on something special for you. Brandon um, with uh, Purium. So if any of you are interested in that. And then, um, of course, the herbs from Soul. I'm diving back into that. So I'll be sharing a lot more of those healing herbs and healing modalities with each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Be well.